quite extensive. Yeah. For a yeah. month. A week. A week. And yes. it's like the long, the long, yeah, long one. Oh yeah. my God, it's expensive. So if I want the 28 inch bundles. Yeah, the bus down. And it depends the on bus the, down. the bus yeah. down, baby. Is that what you don't call it? Bus down. <laughs> yeah. Black like, bus down. And it's crazy. either Peruvian or Malaysian. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Oh, you're doing Peruvian, Jenny. Are we talking four figures? Welcome to another episode of From Boys to Men. This is episode two, if you don't know already, go check out episode one, it was a banger. Um, today I brought my good, good friends. To my left, I've got Henry, Hi. Mario Musa, and of course, the one and only Chunks. Um, guys, thank you for having me. Thank you for actually coming here today. I know you lot are very busy, especially you, Cal. <laughs> um, but obviously, it's 2023. Massive year for all of us, inshallah. Mm -hmm. um, what are the things that you're looking forward to this year to change about yourself, especially from the amazing year we had in 2022? <laughs> I want to start being on time to things. Yeah, you was late. <laughs> you was late, you was no, late. No, literally, I want to start being on time to things. I think last year, I took the piss too much. <laughs> and you know the ones, <laughs> you know the ones where it's like, yeah, 15 minutes is fine until it's like 45 yeah. minutes late. And um, makeup never takes that long. So I need to wake up on time, be on time, be someone that's diligent. Ooh, Everybody say with me, diligent. Good words, good words. Good words. Diligent. We're a month in, yeah. so how's that, look, how's that looking so far? Um, so I was late today. <laughs> no, no, but never like me. This is the thing. Yeah. So moving forward, I'm gonna be better, better timekeeping. Yeah. What about you, Miriam? Oh, Miriam, sorry guys, I always yeah. say Miriam. Yeah. Always gets my name. Do you know why? It's because in Sierra Leone, we yeah. say Miriam. Miriam. Yeah, Miriam. It's actually Miriam. Okay. Miriam. Miriam Musa. Yeah. Miriam Musa. I love the way you said that. <laughs> Yeah, Musa. Well, for me personally, I just want to be more happier. And mm. like, I think I said it so much on my social, like getting into a very good relationship with God is so important for mm. me this year, like putting him in the center. I kind of see if I can do one year of just focusing on him, mm. it must be, it's going to be the best year of my life. So yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> being less busy, bro. Yes. Yeah, I'm just trying to have more time for myself. I feel like um, Philly's right. I mean, we've had so many conversations where you can't keep chasing the bag, man. Sometimes you have to chill out. Because I've seen him on the social, he's constantly just going to places. He's in Cape Verde right now. Mm. Like, what's in Cape Verde? I actually don't know. <laughs> I, saw him, I was confused. <laughs> I like that. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do more yeah. of. So I think, yeah, just take more time to my, myself and just enjoy myself, man. Yeah, for me, I think also as well, like, I worked really hard last year as well. And then towards the end of the year, that's why I went and gone, went to Sierra Leone and we obviously went to Qatar and yeah. we was able to, like, have a journey which wasn't work related. It was just literally for ourselves as well. And I think going to a Muslim country and also back home, made me actually want to go back and just remember who I was again mm -hmm. and finding out my, my purpose, why I do this for. And a big part of that was my religion. And when you touched on religion, I was like, you understand. Yeah. I think for me, <laughs> I've spoken a lot, especially in this podcast, about how much God has helped me to get to where I need to get to. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I forgot him last year. And, and not like I forgot him, but I didn't pray. You know, yeah. I wasn't, um, you know, praying every time a blessing came my way as well. And I felt like, I felt very lost. Yeah. Did, have any of you guys felt lost and felt like, I just need to get in contact with God, but then you haven't because maybe life has just taken over. Yeah. Mm. For me personally, like, do you guys ever have this thing where you know that there's a certain way to do certain things or act a certain way, but you know you're not you're not always in the mind frame of being good? Mm. So I would find like when I didn't want to pray to God, it's just because I knew I'd sin and I knew I would again. And I think mm. that pressure of just like constantly knowing that you're not fully whole in that religion yet, but you know it's the right thing to do. So I always found being so lost, but knowing that God's the right way, but I knew like, I wasn't ready to be 100%. Because I just see it as if I'm not going to do it 100%. Then what's, what's the point? point? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I've been lost. I, I'm, do you know, I'm opposite again. Because I feel like prayer for me mm -hmm. is the start of everything else. Mm -hmm. I think once you can connect and say, you know what, I want to pray, I want to be thankful for this. I want to, mm -hmm. you know, like this amazing thing has happened to me. Or, you know, I feel a bit down right now. Yeah. Just one prayer. Mm. They always say sometimes just put your, your, your head on the mat once yeah. and that will make things continue. So I think I'm opposite to you in terms of like, I just knew that if I, if I did this, it would change. And I've started this year, I prayed five times a day. Oh, wow. Me and Chunks was on a shoot the other day yeah, and he said to me, he goes, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of emotional because I said to him, I was like, oh, it's time for us to pray. And he goes, wow. Usually I'm the one that does that. Yeah, it's usually <laughs> him, isn't it? Like, and, and it was, it was the other I, way like around. I said, it's similar to obviously, um, I'm similar to you in terms of like, I think with prayer, um, once you start doing the prayer is when you one by one will start cutting out the bad things. Mm -hmm. So it's a thing where no matter where you are in life, if you're constantly remembering God, then he's gonna, yeah. you know what I mean, end up helping you with your situation and, and end up like like nullifying all that rubbish exterior coming out, you know what I'm trying to say? So for me, yeah, that was, I was I started praying properly like three years ago. 
Um, I've, I've said this on the socials before, but it was like randomly one time when we just moved into the Bates Squad Mansion. Man's in the yard with all the, the man. The Bates Squad Mansion. Oh, the mansion. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, think about it. I'm 22, bro. Yeah. I'm 22. I just come from council estates and then we just pitched some idea just to get this company to just pay for this mansion for us. Yeah. And randomly it bust, you know what I mean? So we're just there in this yard like, why are we here? Like I went from living in a room that's smaller than this with three of my siblings or two of my siblings and like stepping over them when I'm trying to open cupboards to now having a room that's ridiculous. But then like I'm sitting in bed and I'm like, I've got everything I want. I'm making bread now, but still like there's, I'm having these mood swings and that. Like, is it chemical imbalance? Is it, I went to go check my bread and they're back to me. How's your prayers? And I was like, I don't know. It's obviously I was embarrassed to say I'm a grown ass man. I should be praying. I was like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes man prays, you know what I mean? They're like to me, listen, try and just stick to that for a couple of weeks, see what happens. Well, like I generally tried, and it was just before Ramadan as well. So I've tried to pray now, but I'm, bro, I'm just feeling like something's just been lifted off my shoulders. Like I'm thinking, wow, I'm feeling good now. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm remembering God. So I just like, find it crazy to not, like I understand everyone's situation is different, but I just find it crazy for my, in my instance, to not give thanks when I'm getting blessed left, right and centre. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that was definitely like a turning point for me three years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you, so yeah. you were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to even say my own. So. I think when I first started getting into presenting properly, I can't remember how old it was, like maybe like 23, 4. Like just trying to ting, basically. I remember being on my mum's like balcony, so council estate as well, oh. and you could like- Shout out to the estates, you guys though, man. <laughs> Shout out to the estates, man. You can't forget them. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like you could see the a whole of Black Borough before me. Did you have red carpet? What? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Nigeria for red yeah, carpet, very, very yellow Nigerian. lamp. I was like, how Light's did you know? Lights never white, it's yellow, yeah. <laughs> yes, and um, velvet cushions. Anyway. Yes, of course, of course. Um, So I remember being on my mum's like balcony because I remember just like thinking, and obviously, what do they say? Like comparison is a thief of joy. Yeah. So I was seeing like everybody else that was like my age and upcoming, like just doing like really like cool things on the net. And it just felt like, oh, why am I not? Why am I not there? Why am I not doing? Like, do I not have the personality? Like, am I not, am I not that guy? Am I not that girl? So I remember being on the balcony, just looking up to the sky and bear in mind, I kind of grew up in church, like where your mom like forces you basically to go. But then I stopped going from like I was 16 because I was outside. <laughs> <laughs> and then I knew that I needed that reconnection in uni. I was like, I know I need God, try church a little bit, didn't really work. So I went to the balcony now. I was like, do you know what? I just need, Lord, like if you're there, I don't want to do things my own way anymore. Like I fully remember the conversation. I was like, God, I don't want to do this my own way because all the, every single time I try my way, it ends up failing, it doesn't work. So from I kind of did that, it reminded me of like letting go and letting God, because what God has for you is better than what you could ever want for yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of let go and then that's how Spotify came about. Come on now. So, <laughs> Come on now. I just have to like, well, I have to like glorify the name of God just in that because it was such a turning point where even Spotify, I would have never like seen that for myself. I saw myself somewhere else. But then when you let go and then you allow God to yeah. take control of your life, you kind of see things in a way, it's like a new perspective on life. So that's how I kind of rekindled my relationship with God. Oh, how beautiful was this conversation? That was really nice. <laughs> um, but another thing I wanted to ask you guys, yeah, has your purpose changed now that we're at this oh, age yes. and we're in a different year? You know, we've had, you know, great career so far. Mm. Has anything changed in what you say, you know what, this is what Chance, this is what Mariam and this is what Henry is like, yeah. what is it? Because for me, I'll just give you an example. For me now, it's more about leaving legacy. I, I just want to be able to be remembered as someone who changed the game, was someone that was from ends that represents black people, a black mm. Muslim man <clears throat> from the ends and also like to provide and share my blessings. I went to Sierra Leone and I realised that like, there was a feeling that I didn't like. I didn't like seeing young people who looked just like me, mm -hmm. didn't have the opportunity of their parents to go to another country and become immigrants and have their child in another country. It made me think, wow, like, I felt guilty. And I felt like it was my purpose now to provide some sort of help and infrastructure for these Sierra Leone kids as well. So that's now my purpose is more about everyone else because I just feel so comfortable in my position and I just yeah. I'm trusting God now. Yeah. So um, any of you guys got a new purpose or has it, is it still yeah. the same? Mine's, I'll be honest, um, mine's changed, bro. Like, yeah. um, I think I was naive because I started off like you. I'm not saying you're naive, but I'm mm. saying for me, it was like, yeah, legacy. I want to be remembered as, as that guy and, and I want that everyone liked, et cetera, and stuff. But I feel like as time has gone on, I've understood that <clears throat> this love's temporary. Mm. Um, and like a lot of people change their opinions on you just based off the mistakes. And mm -hmm. what we have to understand is everyone makes mistakes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, like hand on the heart, like I couldn't care less about what people think about me now. It's more of a vibe of what my family think and what that people that I actually like know me like in and out. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like 
I've got comments from people where in my DMs in 2017, 18, they're saying, yo, I can't wait for you to blow, you're under, underrated, you're on the, on the come up, etc. And then 2023, you yeah, kill yourself, you're shit, man. I don't even like you no more. But, but you've changed. I was like, how have you yeah. changed your opinions? You know what I mean? On, on just based off, like, based off what? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've kept it real to myself. You see my family saying that I've kept it real to myself. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like, no matter what you do, you can't impress everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so for me, this legacy talk, it's like, I couldn't care less anymore because mm. now it's about, I look at my mum and dad and I'm like, you guys are still proud of man the same way you yeah. were in 2018. That hasn't changed, bro. So for me, I'm trying to stop impressing people and, and impress my family and my Lord, bro. Mm. And at the end of the day, I'm going to make mistakes 110%, but I feel like there's ways to give advice to people mm. and like belittling them on socials ain't going to work, unfortunately. Yeah. And what I, what's that going to do? It's going to maybe deter them away from the religion even more. Like, thankfully, not for me, because I've got a strong circle, but I'm saying it's just very toxic right now, bro. So mm. for me, yeah, my, 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 my aim has definitely changed 100%. Like I couldn't care less about Lexi. Yeah, my legacy, I'm more thinking about, again, family. Okay, no, my, my bad. I'm, I thought you were going to tell son. me, like, now, when no, no, I no. don't think about Harry Pinero, yeah, that was, like, funny, that... No, that no, no, video. I've, I've completely changed oh, okay, okay. the way I was from before to how okay. I am now, and I'm aware of that, and whoever I lose on that journey, it's, it's, it's fine, isn't it? But it's more about, like, when you pass away, there's going to be people that are going to be like, this person changed my life, this person helped me, and I'm sure you see the messages all the time. I speak 100%. to you about how just working with me, how that's helped my own career. 100%. So I, I'm more thinking about that. In terms of, we've spoken about not caring about those things because it will deter you and it will make you judge yourself and make you think, wow, am I worth being in this position? And that's why I always say that when God has blessed you, no man can curse. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? And it's, it's, it's facts. But yeah, go on, Marion. Talk to me. I think for me, like, um, I'm quite an open person. I'm quite an open book. And I'm, I'm all about working hard and going for your dream. I feel like my purpose before I started getting really into the industry was kind of carefree, no, you kind of just go with the flow. I've been quite yeah. like free like that. And I think as I've obviously been in the industry, I'm getting older, I think I just want to give, I just want to make people feel good. Mm. Do you know sometimes when you watch someone, you, you leave a page and you just feel, you don't feel good, you just yeah. feel a bit irritated. I think I like to give off good energy and I feel like through the fact that I love God and through that I'm such a happy person, I want to leave that kind of legacy. I mean, I guess it is the same thing. Like when I think of legacy, I think of reputation mm. in a way, like all, all the hard work I've done or anything I've given into industry is kind of like knowing that when I do die, people have something to say and it's a good thing. Because I believe that whatever energy you put in, you get it back. And I would hate to kind of leave the earth knowing that my print in the earth has just been kind of negative yeah. or irrelevant. There hasn't been anything sub substantial to it. So my focus is just kind of leaving such a good energy and like good vibes, mm. like, do you know what I mean? Um, I think same, pretty yeah. much. Like mine is initially was just to be a good time girl. Yeah. <laughs> but it still is though. <laughs> no, yeah, but it was only, yeah, only to that. be a yeah, good yeah. time girl. But I think there's definitely more to life than that. Just as like Chunk said, for me, you realize, yeah, you can't please everybody. Every so for me, I guess my legacy is to, I want to be a light in the dark place. I reckon the world is so dark. Mm -hmm. The internet can be so dark. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, I just want to push it all to the side and just be who God has called me to be mm -hmm. and let the light shine regardless. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all have um, responsibilities now as adults and obviously breadwinners. Now, um, I speak to Chunks a lot about how he's in control, of it. basically the head of the family right now, vice versa for myself as well. What does that look like in terms of the pressures that you face and do you feel like you can't be the beacon of joy for everyone? And does that come with like some sort of like negative connotations from other people when they're like, bro, you don't, you don't look after me no more? Or do you have friends who you just like, you cannot help no more because of where you are? Just finding a way to navigate around this topic so carefully, because it's like, you don't want to get emails and messages. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, what I will say on a positive note, like my actual like direct family, my like, relatives so like i'm talking about my siblings so my brothers my brother my three sisters my mom and my dad brother anything these guys need i couldn't care less like money's just an object to me at the end of the day i've been given it i've been blessed by god to have this money so who am i to act up you know what i'm trying to say so now we're talking families my mom my dad these lot can't ask for whatever but whatever they want and i'll send it to them the same day with a smile on my face you know what i mean it's like i like to do it um external for me it's like a thing where Unless now you've, this is how I used to think, and I'm trying to change the perspective because obviously my sisters have spoke to me and, and tried to change me, you know, <laughs> like very stiff. Because my, 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 my way of thinking was, if uh, in terms of me growing up, if I didn't really see you too tough, if you didn't do nothing for me, 
I ain't gonna do anything for you. And that was me, like literally last year, I'd say. But obviously having a conversation with my sister, and that's why they're such amazing people. Like they're telling man, you're, you're lucky to be on this side of the road instead of that side where you're there begging for people to give you stuff. Mm-hmm. You've been blessed, so it's a thing where these guys are your X, Y, Z, Z, your brother, your uncles, your cousins, your aunties. I'm not saying that's who's asking for it. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> I'm just saying if they are to, my sister's saying to me, like God's g- giving you that that power. Like you don't mean that. So you're 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 in a good position. So you might as well help people out because mm-hmm. that can benefit you in the akhirah, like the afterlife. You know what I mean? So for me, I'm looking at like. You know what, Like, even though it is a headache at times, because it's kind of like, I have it, so why not give it? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And see what happens for me on a day of judgment, because at the end of the day, that could be, that could have took someone out of a hole. And, and you know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, they're constantly giving me du'as and they're praying for me now. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, it's put my mind in a dif- different way. And I'm like, you know what, like, at the end of the day, if they just need a bit of money, then it's not that deep to me, because yeah. like, it's going to just stay in my card anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I might as well help people out, like, you know? I'm a bit different now, you know? Whereas, um, for me, I think I'm quite a given person naturally anyways, but I've learned like in this industry and just like as you've grown up and made more money that you have to set boundaries. Yeah. I've been in positions where ugh, people are just taking the piss, like it's just no, as simple that. as that. I and it's that. just like, when it comes to like my family, my mum, my dad, all them lot, yeah, absolutely. But siblings can be an issue as well. Like I'll be real, like oh. that pressure to always kind of, even when you're not the oldest, there is always that pressure of, because of the position, you earn a lot of money. And then it breaks my heart as well where, I'm in a good position and then I see people in my family that might not be. So I do feel that pressure to feel like, okay, anytime my sister or anyone needs something, I have to do it. But at the same time, it's like, I shouldn't have to be the person that drives everyone else. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it sounds selfish, but I see it as, I, when I see like everyone, like we're all born the same, we all have, we all have like, um, actions, we all have choices, do you know what I mean? So however I chose to live and I knew what I wanted and what I want to do, I knew what I had to do to get there. So sometimes, I don't know, I feel like when it comes to money and success, I definitely am giving, I want to give it to my family. But at the same time, I've gone through burnt stuff off of that. And I feel like I all, when you say yes, I think they always accept it. And I feel like you have to have that boundary. And I want my family to win. I want everyone in my member of family to win. But at the same time, it's like, why should I have to can't carry come and kill everyone? Yourself, yeah, you can't come and, kill yourself, and I feel so bad for thinking like that because mm. I know I can give. Like I'm the kind of person if I had one pound left, if it's my friend, my family, I'll give it to you straight away. But then sometimes I just feel like when it's the other way around, maybe it's not always there. So I've set boundaries and mm. I've had to kind of do it, do it set in a way where it's like there's only so much I can do. You can only help some people to a yeah. certain stage, mm. and that's just how I am. I'm a bit myself. Well, one thing I say, we'll say quickly. Yeah. The reason I do help. My, my family, like, it's because of the fact they don't ask for anything. That's the yeah. same. I was about to and say. this is what I'm saying, yeah. because I don't want to tell it like my brother or my sisters call me every week. Yo, let me get this, let me yeah, get that. Yeah. It's not that. Because of the fact they don't call me, I'm calling them saying, you look blessed. And they're like, yeah, I'm nice. And then all of a sudden, like, man just goes to my mum's yard and I'll see there's a broken fridge or something. I'm like, what happened here? Oh, it still works. Yeah. And I'm like, rah, like, it's got to a point where you probably do need things, but you just don't want to call my line and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and stress me out because you think that, you know what I'm trying to say? This is a lot for me. Whereas, yeah. I want to help you guys. Whereas what I have a problem with is people that are calling man on a daily basis. Yo, send me this, send me that, send me that. So when did you want to get up and do something for yourself then? You know what I'm trying to say? That's what I used to have a problem with. But now, obviously, like I said, sister changed my perspective where she said, now you're lucky to be in this position apart from that, other than this position. You know what I'm trying to say? So things have changed. Like, we've used that. How do you guys set your boundaries? Because I think that's important. Because like, listen to what you said. You were saying yeah. how obviously before people just bell you up and stuff. Yeah. How did you actually get to the stage where I was like, yeah, they can't be doing that? Anymore. Nah, I used to just say my money's tied up. You were just like, ah, here it is, here it is. Man, man linked someone in Somaliland, yeah. I'm not even saying who in it. But just, obviously, I got introduced by somebody. Just linked my man. Yeah, well, I've gone, apparently he's a family relative. Cool, I've gone yard now. I haven't shouted him in a year, bro. First message, he said, yeah, I'm, I got married. Congratulations. Yeah, so I need 20 jibs. Oh. Hey. 20 what? Hey. I just literally looked and I said, I said 20,000. 20, I said 20,000 what? Like shillings? Or ah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> shillings? You can get that done now. But I literally just sent that message to my pops. I said, who the hell is my man? Like, why is he asking this? But that just went, lol, just block him. Yeah. So I, I like because my mum and dad rock with me hard. You know what I'm trying to yeah. say? They really respect my opinion. They're like, you know what? They've never told me not to do anything in yeah, this life. So yeah. for me, like, in, in this career, sorry. So that's why I really do appreciate them. That's My boundaries are... I kind of ha- look at my mum and, and my dad and my sisters and I lean them, on them for advice. Yeah. So that's my boundaries because like, I'll, I'll tell them, Yo, you know what, Th- this person said this to me. They'll be like, and then it'll be my sisters, all three of them, lol, yeah. blah, 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 telling me what to do. And I'm like, cool, I'll cut through with that yeah. advice, you get it? So I don't just 
pick up the phone and say, suck your mother, I'm not giving you this. Yeah. I'll say, one second, let me get back to you. <laughs> yeah, I do that as well. You get it? <laughs> so that's what I try. I do that as well. See me, I'm a bit raw, yeah? Because yeah. My, my dad is probably the most selfless man I've ever met. Yeah. And I remember like, I never struggled when I was growing up in terms of like the things that I needed to have in life, from, for example, Sky or mm-hmm. PlayStation or the things that <clears throat> kids wanted when I was young, I had. Mm-hmm. And I saw my dad, we had family members who would take the absolute piss. My dad wasn't no multimillionaire, but he was a, a hardworking man and they would yeah. literally leech from him and then badmouth him. And I always said to myself, I would never want mm-hmm. to go through that at all. So <clears throat> my thing is only my family. Mm-hmm. The, my, my sister, my mum, my dad, they can ask anything they'll get. Mm-hmm. I have friends who have helped me in my darkest stages. I had a friend when I was supposed to go to Mexico, Cancun. Like, money I thought was going to drop, didn't drop. And I remember, I'm the one that said, let's go and do this flight. And I remember, I was like, brother, I was like, I don't know about this flight, you know, bro. Oh, like, man, I'm like, yo, man's goodness. outside in the cab. I'm like, yo, Make bro. Um, you know, the way, the way things are set up right now. And I remember he goes to me, he goes, bro. I said, he said to me, he goes, um, if it's a problem that money can fix, it's not a problem. Yeah. And that made me realise, you know what, money isn't the root of all. It's, it is the root of all evil, but it's not the be all end all. Yeah. Yeah. So for me... I'm only trying to look after people that genuinely have looked after me. And also, if I see someone who I can see is genuinely passionate about something, like say, for example, you want to start up a food truck mm-hmm. and all you need is a certain amount of money, but I can see that you really you cook from home, you do it on your own. Mm-hmm. I'm the type of person that will help you because I can see genuinely that you, you get me, you need it. But I think there's a, a line to be drawn when it's like, where was you when I never had anything? Yeah. You didn't look at me as the person that could help you. It's the level of success that I have mm-hmm. that's changed your view and things. And for me, I think that's where you have to... Um, Jordan Brownie, and then also as well, there's a. I always feel like we have instincts. Our instincts will tell us when somebody or something isn't was, right for yeah, us, 100%. and I always I, I, I live off that. One thing I will say, you know, that on that mindset of where were you when I was, uh, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, yeah, that is also a toxic way to look at things because, say, for example, now you're a normal what, nine to five working like hard man, yeah, mm. like and you've got your bread and that's like grinding on something, but like you, you don't know in what ways to help him because you're busy with your own life, you know yeah. what I'm trying to say, and maybe you're there helping him like with. Words of affirmation, you're helping him, you're telling him you're gonna be yeah. great one day, etc. Yeah. But like now my man's blown up and he's not messaging me back because you didn't help me when I was but I didn't have anything to but, help but, me. No, I was working on my I, life. I don't even mean it in that sense. No, I'm, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah, you, but yeah, I'm yeah. saying a lot of people, I don't want it to they think do. it. Yeah, like, 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 like after I blew yeah. up, I, I stopped shouting these guys. No, no, like, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say. It's literally yo, like I was never the person you would come to for that. And if we don't speak about anything other than this. That's when it's a problem. Yeah. If we no, speak yeah. every day, I come to link you. But I've got friends who've never asked me. My circle have never asked me for a penny. Yeah. So much so that if they were to ever order, ask right? me for something, I would give it to them and yeah. wouldn't ask for it back. Not though, because now they're watching. Yeah, no, I was joking. <laughs> this is all cap. Yeah. yeah. Everything I said was a lay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> side, though, like, it's, it's, it's that level of like, yeah. there just has to be boundaries because like, yeah. as much, and, it's, and it's crazy because I feel like sometimes when you're, when you're in this industry and stuff and you're making money, it looks like it's never ending. But yeah. Yeah. every day, every day we think, right, when, when is it going to stop? And like, then VAT yeah. tax just comes yeah. so yeah. quick. Like, sorry, I think you lot are good because I was stingy. <laughs> I was greedy, and I, I don't feel any kind of way saying that because even growing up, I think when you grow up with not much, mm. you learn to hoard everything to yourself. So all that you have is yours, and nobody else can. So I've literally been like that for a lot of my life, yeah. But whilst pretending like no, I give. <laughs> like if there's somebody, I'll give them. But really and truly, when I think about it, I'd be mad stingy. Mm. So like coming into maybe knowing God, coming into the new year, but knowing God, yeah. Like I realized that. First of all, you definitely will know when someone's trying to take the piss because yeah. God will put it into your heart. You yeah. can like, do you know what I mean? It'll be like, nah, this one is not sitting right. This person is just coming here to mess up my mind. <laughs> but otherwise, to give, I want to be the kind of person by God's grace alone that gives when God tells me to give. Yeah. Do you get it? So the person that's in Somaliland that now wanted 20K, you're a madman. Yeah, you got blocked, yeah. you got blocked. You got blocked. You got blocked. <laughs> madman. Oh but then God. if somebody else comes and they actually need that, am I, and it's like in me, I'm like, I know I could give this. Like, do you know what I mean? I know that what they need it for is, am I now going to be the pe- kind of person that keeps it just because it's 20K? Because I'm, do you know what I mean? Loving the sound of money. Yeah. So that's another thing as well. I don't know about you, Harry. I don't know where you lot came from, but being from South, the love of money was a huge thing. Yeah. I loved money bears. Wow. Give me one pound, nobody, if I break it, you're not seeing nothing of it, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm trying to get rid of the love of money. And if I know I can't die with it, then I might as well do what God has told me to do yeah. whilst I have it. What was your lot's first big purchase? Because you lot did it really well. I see the Cartier bangles, I see what's in your wrist. <laughs> no. You make a lot of money, you fly a lot. Okay. Um, what was the first purchase that you said, all right, cool, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm in the big league. Mine was, I actually bought this watch here to show you guys. 
It was this. Yeah, no, you didn't. You didn't yeah, no, no, I didn't. Did, did, did. Shout out to the manager for manage. And the reason why I bought it, yeah, because um, I used to. What is it, by the way? Uh, Rolex Root Bear. Yeah, why did you yeah, say yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Because you asked what it was, I just had to say. You knew who um, it was now. Yeah. But anyway, the reason why I bought it, yeah, I remember I called my manager and I was just like, I want to buy something. We've been yeah. working. I want something to be a staple of not my success, but how hard I've worked. I mean, stuff like this, watches and the things that we have. Well, actually dreams. I was never the kid that, was, that grew up and had all of this stuff in it. Mm. So when I was able to afford it, I just felt like, yes, this is, this is something I want. And I, I can't lie, when my manager came to bring it to me, mm. it felt like everything it meant to be. Because I know that I, I genuinely worked hard and I wanted it. This is forced. Yeah. I'll tell you for free, bro. This, this is all forced. Yeah. I feel like I got, I got pressured to wear this kind of shit. Nice. I'll be very honest. Because for me, growing up, man used to wear Slazenger. Same way, like I'm yeah. saying, Leacock Sportive, K Swiss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Lonsdale, Everlast. Yeah. I was in there. Yeah. Shout out Lily White for them, Sports Direct. Yeah. Listen, Lily I was White. really, really in there. Sports Direct. Slazenger's a great brand, and, by and the way. And JCB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. So I'm saying. That's, JCB, by the way, that's fake Tim's. Yeah, but I'm trying yeah, to say, yeah, yeah. I was really in there. So yeah, for yeah. me, now, growing up, it was never a vibe of, I can't wait to wear this Rolex. So, Mm. I didn't even, it wasn't even in my yeah. brain, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? I just said I want to make two bags a month. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. So now that, obviously, alhamdulillah, I'm in this position, like, buying this stuff is, but I don't get no joy from it, bro. Like, obviously, recently, you know what, man, copped. I'm not trying to say, yeah, 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 keep yeah. that a secret. Yeah. But on my life, bro, like, first day, yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. Second day, show the fam and that. Third, wait, it's, an, it's just boring. Like, so I, for me, yeah. that, I, I don't now... And I'm not saying you measure your success based off your purchases. I'm not saying that. I'm saying some people do, and that's absolutely fine. But man really don't care for this stuff. Obviously, at the beginning now, yeah. like you said, what was your first big purchase? Remember, I used to make music, so I sold Vibranium. <laughs> sold that record now. Man got six, like 50 bags from it or something. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, it's Volkswagen time. I just passed my test. I need a car. You know what I'm trying to say? So I bought a car, 68 plate, fresh from the Ross Clark dealership. So I thought like, yeah, that was incredible. But obviously now, more like as I... as, as I travel on this journey, it's kind of like, it just becomes shit, bro. Like, I'll be very honest, like, couldn't care less about it. But because now I'm chunks and, oh, he must be making this much, I'm like, oh, shit, I need to buy, buy this stuff to show that I've got it. But, mm. like, I'm really tired of it, bro. Like, who's to say I just want to step out on the Primark joint and, yeah. and, and just really enjoy myself because yeah. that's what I used to wear. Yeah. That's who I am. Yeah. So it's like, I'm pressured, I'll be honest with you, bro. Like, well, I, I don't even know what this is. Like, when I went in there, I said, yeah, let me get the, <laughs> let me get the, the new joints. You know what I mean? The brother came up to me. I actually don't know what that is. Now I do. Okay. But I, I, I didn't know. Like, I went in there and I said, let me get the new one. Yeah. Like, and he went, yeah, this is the 2022 Submariner. I said, yeah, that sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, let me get that, bro. You know what I mean, bro? Like, I'm yeah. forcing it, bro. And yeah. but I, I bought my Rolex because of Philly. Yeah. Like, he was on FaceTime to man, and he's there saying, well, go on, bro, where's your thing? And he's like slapping it on the phone. You know how Philly is. <laughs> and he's saying, like, you're, you're broken now. So I said, say that. Let me see, how much is that? And he told me. I went to the jewelers the next day, I said, yeah, give me one that's more expensive than this. But that's because that was funny for me. I yeah. found it funny, but yeah. in terms of actually having this, I, I couldn't care less. Well, I can lose it tomorrow and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mine's a bit different. Like, I, I'm I kind of like you. I feel like I've never been materialistic. I'm still not like that to this day. So it's not car chase, far chase, a cute little bracelet. Amazing. Do you know what I mean? I love yeah, it. that was a good one. You got me. Because <laughs> if you know, you know. But um, the first thing I brought myself was a new camera because mm. I'm all about self-development. So... Any, I feel I feel guilty if I make a lot of money one month and I go and buy myself a bag. I'd rather I don't get a new lens or get something that will develop me, whether it's for my house, I can make more videos by doing this content. I'm more focused like that. And the reason I think I'm like that is because like my dad has been such a humble man. Like, you know, when you grow up in such a humble household, he's so humble, he's never been like that kind of guy. And none of my mum's not like that, my sisters aren't like that, I'm not like that. So yeah, like all these things are nice. Like it'd be nice to have it all the time, but it's just not mm. there for me. Like mm. what's there for me is like the cameras and stuff like that. So I'm more of a self-development person. And I think when I treat myself to those things, I feel so much more happier. I feel like, oh my God, now my work will be better. I always mm. think like that, like always want to improve whether it's work or so, yeah, I think I'm more focused like that. So yeah, that was my first thing was a new camera. So yeah. And I've still got that camera to say and it's still oh, good, no. so yeah. Uh, what's up, do? Um, five, 60, I've got the 60. Oh, perpendicular. Yeah, 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 <laughs> good lens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, I'm the kind of the same, yeah. not materialistic in any way, shape or form, but wigs was my number one. <laughs> I got myself an actual I'm nice sure wig. You were that girl. <laughs> Melted <laughs> lace. Are you crazy? Yeah, how, how expensive is it? Like, disgusting. <laughs> now it's disgusting. Disgusting. Like, roughly. Um, okay, so my first so expensive wig would have been 
six to seven hundred. Yeah, they're quite expensive. Yeah, For yeah, a week. a week, and yes. it's like the long, the long, yeah, long one. It, oh yeah. my god, it's expensive. So if I want the twenty-eight inch bundles, yeah, the bust down. And it depends the on bust down. the bust yeah. down, baby. Is that what you call it? Bust down, <laughs> jet black like, bust down, and it's crazy. either Peruvian or Malaysian. Yeah. That's what what you're you're doing. Doing. Oh, it's Peruvian. Sorry, are we, are, we, are, we, are we talking four figures? Yeah. Never four. Mm. It couldn't be. That's some people, it could, it could, it could it end it, up there. Yeah, it could end up it there. It could end up there. Yeah. Some people, someone done braids for like 900 something yeah. pounds recently. Oh, lost your I'm mind. Joking. It could end up there. When I get the wife, yeah, let me get the new, the bus down joint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, I haven't got that yet. <laughs> so mine, mine was wigs. Once I got the new yeah. wigs, I was like, yeah, okay, maybe I'm making a substantial amount. And going on holidays. So that was a huge, so again, I didn't go on holidays, didn't do nothing up until like 25, which is crazy. And then I went to Thailand recently and I was like, yeah, this is who I want to be. Yeah. Mm. We just came back from Qatar. I oh, think I that there. for me was another thing that made me put things into perspective. That place is incredible. Yeah, it is. It Hospitality was top tier, no violence, no, you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say, bro? What, what, what country do you know, obviously, you tell me, because I'm not saying there isn't, but walk, girls can just walk outside 3 a.m. Mm. on their ones and yeah. whistle that. They, they can just really be free and nice Plus, and enjoy themselves. Do you remember when we got back to the, to the car from the stadium? Yeah. And um, there was this random lady that was standing by the, um, by the car. Mm. So we've got in the car, we said to the driver, who's this lady? And he was like, oh, well, she, her friends have lost her. And obviously because of the World Cup, everyone, oh, yeah. it's going to probably take her a long time to get home. Wow. He, she came in the car, the, the car with us, dropped us to the hotel, and he dropped her home. Wow. That's like mandatory. You didn't get paid for that. They didn't get paid for it. It was just mandatory. And the reason why I said that is like sp I spoke about Qatar was we was in um, the shop getting thobes, yeah, which is the um, Islamic well, yeah. clothing for us, yeah. And it was this guy whose shop it was, and me and my friends were literally just talking about watches, and he was, he was basically saying, "Oh, listen, I bought that watch the other day," and he was talking about so many of these watches that he has, but in the most humble way. Yeah. But the way he was so hospitable to us, like he gave us. Mats, he gave us clothes all for free. And it was just like- Hello, incense joints. Incense, everything. And yeah. it was like, look, um, come to our house. We're going to- By the way, he doesn't know who we are. Doesn't know us from Adam. He doesn't know who we are. Adam, Adam bro. He just heard we're from London. So he's going, let me look after you guys. Yeah. yeah. And at the end, someone told him, oh, these guys are actually doing well in the UK. He's like, oh, okay. Didn't care about that. Yeah, didn't care. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's great. That's great. I own like 90, 90 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, it's yeah, good. It's good. Whereas good. in LA, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's based on who you are. And I think for me, when I went there, that's what made me realize, okay, cool. like. It's not about the material things. Yeah. It's not about everything else. It's actually about who you are as a person. And I think for me, that's, that's what put things into perspective about what I want to be um, remembered for this year and moving on, mm -hmm. moving forward. But anyway, I wanted to ask you guys another question, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, speaking about image, that's something that we've all kind of like worked hard on. Yeah. Chunks, you've done an amazing, you've had an amazing weight loss journey as well, yeah? <laughs> I thought you were going to joke. No, 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 no. Off camera, he violates me. Yeah, off camera, <laughs> but on camera, it's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> did you guys, or do you guys feel pressure in your parents now that you are becoming more famous and, and more people? That's a gallon first, that's a gallon. Too. Yeah, yeah, I want to ask you two. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Okay, I'll go first. So, um, pressure in my appearance. When I first started out, I wanted to look so much like a boy, so men didn't look at me whatsoever. Why? Why was that? I know it's so, it sounds so crazy, because I just saw how sexualized women were on screen anyway. And it's not, listen, if you're a buff girl, be hot. You're allowed to be. But I think that when women now want to look pretty and look nice, when men start to comment, when they weren't asked, by the way, it's just insane. So when I first started, it was tracksuits only. So that way, if they're like, oh, she's a pretty girl, it's because they just see my face and that's it. Probably not the best way to think about it anyway. But then as I have gotten bigger, I think, I don't know about you, Marion, but for me, when I see like a thick babe, I'm like, yep, tomorrow I'm going to be a size 12 to 14, maybe 16. <laughs> and then the next day I'll see the slimmest thing yeah. and I'm like, yeah, size six, yeah. actually. <laughs> So it is hard. I think yeah. as a woman, it's definitely not that easy. For example, I just posted something the other day with um, Coyle Ray, yeah? Saw sure that. And oh, yeah, we, oh, honestly, she was so great. Yeah. And because we're small busted babes, as in bust, as in chess, <laughs> <laughs> they now came to say, oh my God, she were these little boys in wigs. And I'm just like, bro, I flipping no. Now, this is my thing. Because I've got a small chest, I'm a B cup by the way, and more time I wear stuff that kind of covers it anyway because I don't, I don't like showing too much. Does that make me any less of a woman? 
No. And it doesn't. Because our body's fire. Do you get it? Like, oh, <laughs> and it man. is period. On Monday, on and it is period. So I'm just like, how does it? But then you have to realise, you have to realise the internet is not real. People yeah. aren't real. This person has woken up this day, yeah. decided to feel shit and tries is trying to project this shit onto you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not hurt by it, but I'm just like, right, is this what, <laughs> with the blood still wet on the streets, yeah. this yeah. is what you've bought from your heart? Like, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, I feel like I'm kind of, I'm kind of the same, but kind of not. Like I think when I first came into the industry, mm. I was, I didn't care. Yeah. Um, because obviously, I think when you start anything, you're just the best version of yourself. You're yeah. social of yourself, and then you put that version of yourself online. So yeah. what you've got to lose, do you know what I mean? And I think as time went on, like obviously comments will play a part in your mental. You start to think, okay, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should yeah. try that. And I'll be real. Like I'm, I'm the kind of person, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Like, I just don't care. I won't think about it. I'll just do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, if I've had moments where I feel like there has been pressure. So, um, I think there's a certain look that does well. I think we kind of, there's like a mainstream beauty. Absolutely. There's a mainstream beauty that does well. And yeah. I feel like, um, Instagram obviously highlighted that a lot. And I think um, in those moments, it made me think, oh, I want to try this. I want to try that mm. so I can have that mainstream beauty. And what that ended up doing for me was just putting me in this like deep hole of constantly trying to find something. You you constantly trying to think, okay, oh, maybe if I change this or if I add this or if I try that. And I think there's a fine line between like enjoying getting ready and looking good for yourself and then um, doing all that to feel like you need to fit in. Mm. And um, I got to a stage where I think I wanted to do so much little things to feel like beautiful for that standard. Mm. But I've gotten to a stage now where, yeah, I don't feel the pressure. Like I'll come on with like- Cause you're it now. Yeah, oh, like, You've no, been like, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on top of that, it. who's even got time? Yeah, like, like, I don't you like, like who am I, who am I yeah. feeding right now? Cause I know it's not Jonathan. Yeah. It's one bedroom flat yeah. with a rock hard pillow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And a rock hard no, something else. I'm That's so it. sorry. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just got that. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That's not the only thing where he's knocking about. No, but do you get it? Like, I don't. Yeah. It's, so, am I gonna be, feel good in myself? Because yeah. that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. But am I gonna start looking? And what you're saying is so true. Because yeah. there is definitely a standardized beauty to this day. By the way, yeah. Like you see it every single day. You go on Instagram and you see the same kind of guys like in all the same photos, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. But once I realised I don't have to fit into that, yeah. it just took so much more pressure off me. Yeah. It means that, all right, cool, I know that I'm beautiful because I'm mean, not because yeah. I look like all of these other exactly. girls. Do you get it? Gone with it. That's a nice one. How about you, Chance? Obviously, like I said, your journey was, was incredible. What made you say, I want to go and change my appearance? Um, for me, bro, obviously, everyone's getting insecurities. Um, and I feel like me now, when I was like four or five years ago, whenever it was, I was at my heaviest and uh, had my friends around me. And my friends weren't really, they didn't really make jokes about like my weight or anything, about all my, uh, my other insecurities, like my gap tooth, et cetera. Um, but now jumping on social media, I thought, all right, cool, so these are my insecurities. I know they're gonna be highlighted because I know what social yeah. media's on. Mm -hmm. So what it's done for me, it's kind of just fastened the process for me to now try and fix these things. So mm -hmm. with my first check, I forgot to even say, I did my, um, my teeth, so I did Invisalign like way before I even got the car, so I said, yeah, this one is getting fixed straight away. <laughs> I didn't like it growing up, but my mum always said it's beautiful. I said, no, mum, I don't like it. She used to be upset about like me even trying to close it. So that was my first one. Obviously now, the weight's always been an issue because I, I wanted to change it for myself. Um, and then, but it was just, I kept like throwing it off. I kept being lazy and stuff. But another, and I've said this before, why I wanted to lose weight was the clean up music video. I've said it, I think I showed, I think mm -hmm. I've told you. Um, we meant to do a music video. And um, this is when every we ran into peas, isn't it? So mm. me and Philly are like, yo, let's go. Selfridges, Harrods, and just run up some bands. Yeah. I said, yeah, I got 10 racks. I'm really tough, you know what I mean? <laughs> I literally allocated 10,000 pounds for fits. So I said, yeah, me and Philly were in there. Mm -hmm. I must have stepped, he's going, he's going to Gucci now. He's grabbed his top bottom shoes. I've tried to, yeah, he got the 3XL and that. He got the, they were like, nah, we, we don't do garms that size. And I'm like, oh, rah. So like, I was really just, looking left, right, and center mm. for, for clothes that fit me. Whereas Philly's just going, yeah, there, grabbing it. Yeah, and yeah. then there's little small tight body. So I said, like, wow. <laughs> like, where did, so where did man go? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, so I ended up forcing it with this dry tracks that I even like too tough. And yeah. then the next joint, like some Palm Angels jumper that's, that can fit three houses in there right now. You know what I'm trying to say? Why you laughing? Why you laughing? Why you laughing? Obviously for me, it was like, all right, cool. I went home, I said, yeah, I'm changing this. Cause mm. it's a joke, you know what I mean? So brought in my brother, Kyle KGD, and we just, and this happened in lockdown. So. Mm. Lockdown's come about, no one's working. I said, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna eat more food and just gain even more weight? I said, yeah. fun that, I'm gonna yeah. change it up. Built a gym in my garage. You walk? 
And I got a gym in my garage. Okay, cool. There was a garage yeah. for cars, but none, none of us was using it. So we said, let me as well use it. Yeah. yeah. So there's a garage Casual for cars. Because we use it, we use it for the, like, we'll park in, in the front of the house. Because it's crazy. Park in front of the house. Yeah. So instead, in the garage, we said, we're going to change it up to a gym. Yeah. And it was summer, so it wasn't even cold. Yeah. So then the sun just beating off the garage. It was hot, ready to just burn some calories, lose weight. And then July 2020, yeah. I think I just started it. And then 15 months later, I lost like 50 kilograms. Alhamdulillah. I love that. Alhamdulillah, man. Can I just ask a question? Sorry, I feel like I always have questions. So was, for you, was it like a mental note? Like you said, okay, I'm not happy with this. Yeah, yeah. It's not what anyone else No, no, no. I generally, like, it was a like thing where, like, I, like I said, I've been on YouTube for four years before I even start to lose weight. Yeah. So the comments didn't really, uh, yeah. didn't really get to me because mm. I don't really read them too tough. Do you get yeah. it? And yeah. if I'm honest, like, my comments, like I said, in the first three years were all positive, you know? Yeah. Like, people just kind of acclimated to how I looked and said, you know, like, this is my guy, man. I like him. Yeah. You know? I mean, he's, he's a cool <laughs> kid. He's a little cute, funny kid. So they just commented, like, all the good stuff. So no one really violated me unless I had, like, the new fans. Like, if, I, if, my, if my videos blew up on the meme page and people didn't know who I was, they'll be, like, violating. But I'm, I was fine with that, you know what I'm trying to say? Because I wasn't never that kid in school that got the compliments anyway. So I didn't really care about it too tough. Um, so I just kind of, like, adjusted to it. But then, like I said, for me, wanting to lose weight was because of my own problem where I was like, okay, I don't like, I don't like the way I look anymore because yeah. I'm gaining way too much weight. Yeah. So that was the reason I changed. It wasn't anything that got to do with people. Yeah. I've never really cared about what people think about me, about my appearance, yeah. uh, if I'm honest. Can I ask a question? What What did you do or when you first started getting negative comments or when you get them, how do you like react on first <laughs> C? <laughs> Oh, mine, if I see, all right, so I've gotten a really good like way of like avoiding the stuff that I don't like, cause I'm quite sensitive, like believe mm. it or not, so sensitive. So I just block things that I don't want to see. Like if I know people are saying certain things about me, I'll just block them words so I can never see it. Like literally it's my world. Everyone else is just living in it. Mm. Like it's the only way I can kind of- <laughs> That's like, a good way to yeah. do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just, I just want to see like rainbows and unicorns and yeah. feel about my world. I don't want to see all the negative stuff. So I hide it. But if I do see something initially, I don't know. I just kind of just take it in, look at it, look at the profile first because it's like it's not you, it's not me you're talking yeah. to. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of just remember like it's just a comment. Yeah. I know like it seems like a big deal, but you know when you deep it, it's actually su just a yeah. comment. I think I've gotten myself to a better stage of just taking it in and mm. just it's a comment. Like what can it do? I don't really take too much anymore. I think for me, I've always been on a thing of killing with success. Ooh. That's always been my thing. That's good. But like, you have to work for that one. Yeah, but, yeah, no, no, but that's the thing, though. I think that puts <laughs> me. Yeah? Start working. yeah, yeah, no, no. Honestly, though, because. Because I've died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Because my point is, it's like, yo, like, I'm here doing me. I'm doing yeah. my stuff, yeah? yeah. I'm not troubling no one. I'm, not, I'm just doing what I need to do, yeah? And you have a problem with that. You have yeah. a problem with my hair. You have a problem with how old I am. Yeah. You have a problem with whatever it may be, yeah? It's again, it's projecting. Yeah. And I've always said that people that are winning, if there's four people winning, yeah? They're all focused on winning. Yeah. Losing is not even part of it. And I think it's always someone who hasn't got what you have that will always have something to say about oh, you. Definitely. And I always realise that I never ever get comments from people that are doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah. And it's never like within the same <coughs> field or it's always someone outside of that world. And I think, like what you said, I mentally do that without physically yeah. doing it. I'm just like, yeah, cool. Or then I'll have someone else control my socials if I don't yeah. want to look at it. If we have things to do, all right, manager have to control that, then it's not me doing it. Because yeah. it just allows me to just focus on what I've, being able to gain from this, which yeah. is a comfortable life, a, a, I've got a beautiful son, my family, we're in a great place. Like, what more can I ask for? Mm -hmm. Everything, you can't have all of this stuff yeah. and not expect that stuff mm -hmm. comes yeah, with I it. Yeah, I agree. Someone asked me, would you rather be rich and famous or rich and no one knows you? And I've, I've, I said, listen, the latter. I would, I would rather be rich and no one yeah. knows who I am than be rich and famous because when you're famous, it comes with so much stuff that you don't even put into your mind in the beginning of the you journey. You can't even get acne again as a what? famous person. No. You're in trouble. Yeah. Literally. Get one spot. You're Bro, the other day, I done a shoot, there was Carmex over there. No, I no. commented before anyone else did. I said, yeah, <laughs> you don't come Yeah, let's just let you guys know. I see what you don't see, but don't try it. Don't, don't try to come and get me, brother. And it's like those little fine things is what we have to look at. But in terms of like changing my image, I don't think I have. I still wear hoodies and, and, yeah, and combats. Yeah. It's my sister who's telling me, brother, you're not in Peckham no more. Um, so it's a thing of where I have to just literally just build myself yeah. because I just know that like, you know, people are going to look at me a certain way and I want to be in certain conversations. Yeah. But other than that, do you guys, because you guys are boys, do you guys feel like, um, obviously girls have their beauty standards. Like, is there a, a, me, like a man beauty standard? Trimmerfeed.com forward slash. Tri your trim? Trim has oh. to be Sharp Narasenton for what, me. What else is there? That's it. Just trim? Yeah. How easy wow. it is. Wow, that's I'm just trim. Like, if, I, if, I, if, I dress, if I dress decent or clean, I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm all right, but it's the trim for me. Okay. And when my hairline's not even, so you're I just for the hairline, to, yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Chill out, chill out, it's <laughs> saying too loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's just shouting, I said it, I whispered and you shouted. <laughs> 
your hairline. Yeah, she said the hairline. All right, the hairline. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Why are you zooming in, brother? Like, man. Everyone's just coming at the hairline. You see what I'm trying to say? But people in your own yeah, circle. We're not even talking about hairlines. No, but jokes aside, I think that's it for me. It's just like making sure yeah. I look clean because I'm yeah. someone's mother. I'm a father. <laughs> so, guys, there's a lot that I've learned um, about myself and my career and so many things that we probably didn't know, didn't get taught in school. Um, I.e. taxes and, and, yeah, this guy was what he made, <laughs> he made the other day. Um, what's some of the things that you've learned that you probably wasn't aware of, but now it's like something that if anyone else Fucking is watching... Man. Yeah, yeah, dot com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. UK yeah. and I.R.E. Brother, Both of them together. You. Yeah, man pays taxes six times a year. Oh, my God. What's that about them? Yeah, they want me to have some left then or <laughs> Because the way they are violating... Yeah. i got my brother Taft behind what's the camera right now. Yeah. I don't, you know what, brother? Like, what's... Imagine I'm getting told you need to spend more money. I said, I, I, I got told by my parents to save. So when, where does this yeah, make sense? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? They're saying in order to save money, you have to spend it. Yeah. Does that make sense, my brother? Yeah. And I studied economics. <laughs> so yeah. I'm there thinking, like, how? You know what I mean? I thought in order to, but they're saying inflation goes up 10% every year. So yeah. technically you're losing 10% of your value of your money. Probably just take it all. I don't yeah. want it anymore. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't understand how it works, bro. And school, oh. I really need to change the whole curriculum mm -hmm. because they're teaching men about um, William, what's that? Yeah, Henry yeah. the Eighth. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. Divorced, beheaded, died. When have I used that? Yeah. About Anne Boleyn and Jane Seymour. And but you can teach man how to really yeah. live. Yeah. You get yeah, it? Like, yeah, yeah. maths, I get it. I, I completely, I'm, I love it. You know what I mean? It makes sense. But, like, bro, there's some subjects in there that really don't make sense, bro. Mm, yeah. Teach man how to live when I get out of this system. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I agree. I feel like money management has should be something that you learn from school because I learned it at uni. You get like a, um, a course, I think, do like an additional course. So I did that. And just learning how to manage money, I think you've got to kid, um, teach kids that. Because mm. I remember the first time when I got my first ever job, I worked in a coffee shop, right? <laughs> and I remember my first ever pay, like my paycheck, even though I knew to save, that I just didn't know how to handle the money. I just went shopping and then the next one, I thought I'll do better next time. Like it really takes you like time, I feel like to learn how to manage money. Yeah. And I think school, teaching those basic skills is more valuable than learning about, you know, Henry VIII, I agree. Man, come on, man. I think that we should be taught a bit more about politics, but like politics that's happening now. Cause you don't really realize how much it affects you yeah. until it starts affecting you. Yeah. Do you get it? So I remember being like 18, I think I was going into first year. And even though this doesn't affect me directly, I remember whoever was the president of America at the time had sent bombs into Syria. Yeah. And I said, ain't no freaking way. Like, th why isn't this? Why aren't we learning the reason as to why this yeah. is even happening? Is this legal? <laughs> why is it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, you, but you, I would never know. All you just see on the TV is that it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You just see that it's happening, but yeah. not the reasons why. And then on top of that, for example, two or three days ago, I don't know when this is going to come out, but they raised privately in the UK the retirement age to 68. I see Rex oh, talking wow. about it today. Rich was saying, like, in what world can you be 68 and have a, long, a lot of time Guys, left in yeah. this world? We're going to be here at 68, the same, yeah. the same panel. Wow. Yo, take me like the shorts. Welcome to my YouTube channel. No, for real. Oh, nah, brother. Never me. For channel. real. Yeah, yeah. For real. So, like, when you don't really know stuff like that, at 18, you don't actually understand what it yeah. means to be a 68-year-old working. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, stuff like that, we really do need to know and understand so we know the reasons why we'll end up rioting. I don't know yeah. if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. yeah. But the reasons why the general public get, get angry, that's, yeah, what we need to know and why. Mm -hmm. I think um, a very good point you made there as well. But I think for me, what I've learned is just in situations that I've gone through is having a very strong team behind you. I think in the yeah. beginning for me, when I first started, it was just me and my manager. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to come in between what we've built. Mm -hmm. But as bigger as you get, is the more like loopholes you allow for, for negativity and, and bad things to come into you. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd advise anyone to get an accountant, get a, a lawyer, mm -hmm. get a PR team, get someone who can cover you when you can't see certain things. Because yeah. I feel like, <clears throat> especially we're in this, in this public eye and as black people as well, yeah. it's so much easier for us to fall in comparison to our, counterpart, our mm -hmm. counterparts because yeah. of our skin tone and because yeah. of how racist this country can be as well. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like, that has been my biggest, I think, lesson that I've learned, along with like money management and learning yeah. about taxes, which I hate with every no, no, soul no, no. of my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and, and, and <laughs> it makes me realise that literally more money, more problems is yeah. a real thing. I never, I thought it was just a great song that Biggie made. Yeah. <laughs> but, but honest to God, it's a real thing. Like more money, more problems, bro. And it's yeah. like, 
I think the curriculum, like you said, is something that's very integral, but that's why I feel like when we can have conversations like this and I'm speaking about legacy and having these young people watch us and be like, Raj, you know what? These lot are speaking about it must mean something as well. Does that put it? pressure on you, bro, to think about the, that the youths are watching? I, I'm just that person, bro. Like, I can't change who I am, innit? I'm a very selfless person, innit? Like, when I go to places and I, and I, I think of youths, it's because I remember when where I was growing up, we never had none of that. There was nobody that was positive at all. Negativity was positivity in my area, innit? So it's like, now that I've come out of that place, yeah, I don't want to show you lot that I'm, a, I'm still the person I was when I was 16, 17, 20. I want to show you that I'm this person now, innit? So that's what it's more like. So that at least, bro, if I help 10 people in the world in my life change their, their route from being person. a bad person to a good how, person. How do, you, how do you feel when um, they have a problem with the way you carry yourself? And they say that you uh, are a negative one. I, 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 do you know what it is for me? It's a very good question. I think for me, it's like knowing who you are is very important because whatever image I'm painting for myself is, is literally, it's a career thing. I do that for my career. You know me and all of you guys know me outside of work. It's complete to two different people. But if I was this, hey guys, you need to do this, I wouldn't be in this career. I wouldn't be in this position yeah. that I'm in right now, innit? So it's like, I'm aware of that. It's like, get in the door and then also say, guys, this is really me. Like, it's, 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 it's kind of like, it's literally, it's, it's, it's basically that. But then it's also to, to let people know that along with all of that stuff, this is what I really care about more yeah. than anything, can it? And I think for me, like, that's why I align myself with people who are very selfless or people that yeah. generally are loving and actually care about other people in it. So, yeah, but I always love where I'm from. So it's yeah. not like, you know, the people who are not looked up to when I was younger didn't have, they didn't inspire me, they did. They, they made me, you know, feel comfortable to kind of be myself and to not kind of take no shit or nothing. But at the same time, that doesn't help because most of them people are probably in jail. Mm -hmm. Probably them people are probably dead. And it's like, I prefer this soft life to that life mm -hmm. every day of the week. I was gonna say something like, I really like what you said about um, having your team, like having mm. your people. Um, I actually do believe in the saying of, show me <clears throat> your friends and I'll show you your future. Because... But by the way, my team, I'm paying them. So it's not like they're <laughs> there, like from my heart. Only my manager, to be honest. So, uh, oh yeah, and Taff, sorry. You know, there's some people, okay, there's, let me change that. Okay, let me change that before I get shot. Um, no, there is some people that genuinely, mm -hmm. they just want to see you win. Yeah. But they're very rare. Yeah, and I, you and I, I, mean? and I believe that um, when you find a team or you have a friendship group or, you know, you just have family that really believe in you, because I think it just takes one person to believe in you as well. It just literally takes one person. Um, when you have that team, I think it's when you find it, it's so important to stay strong with that team because um, for me, something that I learned, the, the biggest thing I learned was like, especially as a black creator, like it's harder. Mm -hmm. we, it's just a bit harder. And I think when you find yourself in a space where there's people that get it, and they want you to do well and they want to believe in you, then I just feel like the world's also at your oyster as well. So, yeah, I believe in... That's something I learned. It's just having that good team and... But we're transitioning into a time right yeah. now where it's cool to be black, which is sick. Yeah. It's also... It's also highlights how much of a problem it is because of the mm. fact it's taken this long. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. yeah. people have quotas to fill now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You have to have a black teacher to represent. Yeah. But hopefully within the next 10 years, the new generation kind of like... It, we're just seen as normal, normal you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? And that's, that's the aim, that's what we're doing now. We're just busting down these doors and yeah. like, who, who was 10 years ago working with all these brands that we worked exactly, with? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's sick, man. So we're talking about legacy, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, Chunks was the first person to do this. Mm -hmm. You're the first YouTuber, personally, to go and do a madness on Soccer Aid. Mm -hmm. Soccer Aid is the biggest football charity game in the world and you and Philly were trending more than anyone. We yeah. had the likes of David it's Beckham crazy. and yeah, stuff there. Put that into context, bro. No, it's ama well, like, it's yeah. amazing, bro, but it's just like, yeah. Like, if I'm honest with you, bro, does that, if someone tells you, oh, you managed to do this, do you generally feel a buzz or do you just pretend like it's a buzz? Yeah, because that's, yeah. What, yeah, I'm used to it. When I oh, yeah, that's, I'm used to yeah. it as well, so but you know, real. my sister bought me something, yeah, for my birthday, yeah, um, and it was a book for my 30th birthday, yeah, yeah, and it was literally the journey from when I first was born oh, to now. That's and different it's the only way I was able to comprehend but the journey. That's different because you love your sister. Yeah. So it's like anything that she gives you is kind of like No, it wasn't even that because she gets on my nerves. But I'm saying it's it's more about literally <laughs> the being able to see. Yeah. Because right. every day, it's like, for example, a postman. A, point, yeah. a postman's yeah. first yeah. ever delivery he made in comparison to his last, last yeah. it's not the same yeah, because yeah, yeah. he's used to it. Mm. But he could have delivered some amazing mail on time and mm. it was the greatest of all time. But mm. he's so used to it, he can't even comprehend. It's the same with all of us. We so have so many accolades yeah. that... Bro, when someone tells me how you know much red carpets I've been on, I've done BT Awards twice, ah. I've done the Mobos, I've done the Brits. Well, look, look, look. Someone no, no, has no, no, to remind me, you, me right now, that. You're doing this. Uh, is it not make you look ungrateful? And no, oh my God, he's it's big not headed. That. It's, it's uh, like, we need to move him. No, no, no. Do you know what it is? I'm so grateful, but the, the, my, my point is, 
I'm so consumed in being great on being good at my job or working and, and providing that mm. the accolades are no longer like the main thing for me. It's actually about putting out content. It's but actually do you about. Watch, do you guys watch back? Like, do you ever actually have moments where I always, you have to I always go watch back? from boys to men? No, but like, as in, like, your, the first ever content you guys did, you ever actually go back regularly I and cringe watch it? So you have, hard. You have to. No, 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 no. I cringe like a madman. What was I doing? But. The, the rawness the of that yeah. is amazing. And it's yeah. like, now I just feel like a more um, put together version of what I was. Can I ask you guys, do you guys feel like you're role, role models? No. No. People tell me I am. I think people, I people am. People say I am, but, yeah. I, I, but I, I wouldn't say live by how I live. Mm. I wouldn't tell anyone. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's what a role model is. Focus me. No, but, we, no, but role model is someone that you can look up to and try to emulate. Yeah. You can. At the end of the day, I am not because I don't want anyone to be like but Don't, don't yeah. you reckon you're one? Not by choice anyway. Yeah, that's yeah, but I, I'm, and that's unfortunate. I'm not, oh, by, yeah. not by choice, but I'm saying. How are you going to say that's unfortunate? I say it's unfortunate <laughs> because yeah. no one should, no little Muslim should be looking up to me saying I want to be like chunks because mm. I'm not living the life of how a Muslim's meant to be living mm. in terms of what's written in the Quran, right? Mm. So I don't want people to now okay. make mistakes like me because Hear I'm going to listen to music and I'm going to put it on my story and I'm going to sing with it. Mm. And I don't want people to have a problem with it because everyone's making their own mistakes. So I don't want these lot to look at me and think, oh yeah, I want to be... Obviously, there is good in me. Of course there is. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But I don't want these kids now to think, oh, trying to listen to music, so I am too. Mm. I'm getting this residual sense. Do you know what I've I don't need that. Mm. Don't, don't, don't look at me. Don't. I just make videos. <laughs> Come to me if you want to laugh and then leave. <laughs> okay. Do you know what's so true and what I've learned? People, mm. once you like believe in God, yeah. people see you as the beacon of all that is good. Yeah. Something they think you're never allowed is to... Imam Sheikh yeah. Amin. I have me now speaking about religion um, and stuff, right? It does not mean that I'm perfect. I right. think a lot of people yeah. now think, okay, now you've quit music, now you can't do anything wrong. Yeah. And, and Unfortunately, that's not how life is. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. Who are we, man? Like, yeah. we're going to make so much mistakes. So I really kind of sat down and deep down and said, you know what? Like, I just don't care anymore. That's why I've had this, have this really like this mentality of I don't care. What a lot of people will do is just see something. I think they know the whole backstory yeah. or something. And unfortunately, that's the life we're living in it. So it's like, that's why I'm really on this fuck it mentality. I'm sorry if I can't swear, but it's like, I'm literally going to just live my life. And as long as my parents and my Lord are happy with me, that's what I care about, bro. I'm going to make mistakes. Don't, don't like kill me for everything I do, man. I think what I'm trying to say. we definitely need to know that, like, understand as a people that no one is good. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one is pure. Yeah. No one is perfect. Trying to be. Yeah. And what, yeah. Exactly. And I think the fact that if we show that we are trying to be by learning from our yeah. mistakes, by being more of who God has called us to yeah. be every single day that passes, yeah. that should be good enough. But people think, including myself, we all do it. We think that we're judges of others when yeah, there's only yeah. one. Most people's relationship or journey with God is private yeah. because yeah. we are on platforms is as if when you say something people literally take a little bit of it and run with it so i think that's what it is as well because mm. once you're no, but, no, but there's ways about it the yeah. thing is i have no qualms or yeah. at the end of the day when you when you uh, um, sin in public you have they have the rights to uh, like talk to you about what you're doing because yeah, you're not meant to you're meant to hide your sins right yeah yeah but i have no problem with people like talking to me about oh you're sinning just come into my dms more time i look at my dms most people do I, I, they're lying if they say they don't you, i look at my dms and i open some of the messages that are genuinely that like, are genuinely sincere and like yo my brother my brother in islam i want to help yeah, you with yeah. this and they give me examples and quotes and i'll be like i appreciate you when you're going on twitter and you're seeing this person saying my man blah blah blah, blah, blah yeah. it's like it's a bit like it's bro it's like this muslim police thing right i'll tell you right, right now yeah i've got a lot of friends I'm not going to name them, yeah. that are either interested in Islam or are uh, Muslim. And um, I'm also not going to name them because they don't want to talk about it. But what I will say is they're big, big people, bro. And they will never come out and say they're Muslim because they're scared of the backlash. Mm. So for me, and backlash because now if they do anything wrong, brother, you're Muslim, you're not meant to do this. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That there's people that are genuinely interested in the religion, but the only thing they look at is social media. And when you've got these people just negatively just berating them, oh, uh, uh, the, the Muslim creative, which is us, me and you, um, and whoever else is Muslim, it's kind of like, oh, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell people I'm Muslim because mm. I'm scared of it. And then people will look and be like, I'm interested in Islam. All of a sudden, they check social media. Oh, no, rather, those people are on those Muslim creators. I'm not going to tell you. I feel like if they can come for you, you're, you're, you're deterring. Anyone. Yeah, you're yeah. deterring. But it's because, yeah. They're deterring people yeah, yeah, from Islam, yeah. bro. But I think it's just because Islam, is, um, in my opinion, is, as a Christian, Islam is more of a strict, like, for you to be a Muslim, yeah. you are dedicated no, just because of how. I wouldn't say that, you know. That's I think how it's, I think it's, a it's, it's a very it's, easy, yeah, it's, it it's an easy religion to follow. I just feel like. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, with Christianity, it's also a strict um, yeah. religion. Maybe the word but is I just strict. feel like maybe it's... people try to do the loophole system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. what it yeah, is. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, saying that's, I'm not saying that that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's I'm just saying, from my understanding, that's what it seems to be. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, 
with tradition, like now being a Somali, like, I'm, bro, Somalis are very strict when it comes to Islam, bro. Yeah. It's just now, if you've seen people that have fallen off, that's just because they fell off, you know what I mean? But the main thing is we're meant to follow our, our book. At the end of the day, that's meant yeah, to be everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether, whether it comes to, the, the, like, I mean, Indians, uh, the Torah, the Hinduism, yeah, yeah. everyone, bro. Yeah. You're meant to follow your book. Yeah. But I just feel like with Islam, it's like they're the most critical when it comes to their people yeah. for some reason. Because now let's say a Christian creator makes a mistake. I don't see Christianity Twitter coming. Is that even a thing? Yeah. Mm. No. You tell me. I mean, it I'm depends. Here to learn. And I, do you know what it is? It depends how much um, emphasis you talk about your religion. If you're someone that always talks, in such a, not judgmental, but you are high and mighty. Yeah. I think that's when people get very like, but you're high and mighty, why are you then doing this? But yeah. if you don't do that, then what can you but do? The thing is, though, I think there's a, there's a um, element, because this is the last time we'll wrap it up here. Yeah? I think, yeah, with God, when somebody is speaking highly about the God that they love and they yeah. serve, yeah, that's them being open and honest about mm. the God they love and they're not hiding from it, yeah? That's... I think when you start to paint someone with the brush of a perfect Muslim or perfect Christian, yeah? yeah well, that's you, thing, brother. And you are no longer... You, you're nothing of the sort as well. It is very hypocritical. Bro, God think, loves people who repent, bro. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And yeah. I think really, that our God is the most beneficial and the most merciful for a reason. And I think that is all, as creators, we need to focus on. And that's why I say this year was very important to me to pray and get closer to God and have that relationship. All right, guys, before we wrap up, um, I want to ask everyone individually um, one mm. thing that they want to achieve this year. And I'm going to start with myself. I just want to be more consistent. I want to, in every way, shape or form, I just oh, want to have God. consistency be attached to my name with everything I do, whether it's, you know, gym, which I'm starting in February. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was just February. Yeah, no, I'm just February. But I'm joking, like, prayer, um, you know, YouTube, uh, presenting. I really just want to go hard on the things that I feel like I'm good at and I just want to, you know, achieve maximum greatness. Mm-hmm. What about you guys? Uh, I was going to say a walk-in wig closet. <laughs> <laughs> Would love that by the end of the year. <laughs> but um, diligence, I think, so consistency, but a little bit, do you know what I mean? Smart. And, um, <laughs> and um, oh, to be happy. Mm. What? Like the Bible does say, this is a day that the Lord has made. Rejoice yeah. and be glad. I want to rejoice and be glad in every single day because why would I be upset for? Exactly. I love that. I think mine would be the same. I think discipline is something I'd love to make sure I achieve this year. Even if it's like one thing, whether it's gym, reading my Bible plan, things like that. So discipline, consist- consistency, and just always good vibes. Yeah. yeah. Um, tip top mental health. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's mental health, real life, man. Uh-huh. So um, for me, it's just, I'm just trying to be happy, bro. I'll mm-hmm. be honest, like anything yeah. else, I couldn't care less. I just want to be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I want my iman to be on point. I want to be close to Allah and that's the aim. And stop trying to make more mistakes, Carl. I'm just doing too much. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably even said something crazy in there. Forgive me. It's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. It's alone, a mistake. Man. But anyway, guys, thank you for coming through. Uh, this has been from Boys to Men podcast. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what you think. And look out for episode three, man. Damn no.